Is God good, everyone? You know, we're, I am first of all very proud of every one of you that's come tonight to hear from God, get a message from God that will change your thinking and then change your life. The Bible says this, that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And you don't get transformed with a zap. You get transformed by exposure. And as you're hearing what God is saying, it transforms your thinking, which transforms your, your, your heart, which transforms your actions, which transforms your life. I'm so proud that you're investing tonight in your life. And we really believe that we're going to get a word from God tonight that will change our thinking. You're going to be exposed to new ideas. And all of it is to prepare you for your destiny and your purpose. We're all being trained for greater things. How many believe God wants to do greater things? And, and, and I, I just want to, I just want to make sure I'm always teachable. You never want to get to the point that you know it all. I, I think you're really growing. This is how I believe you're really growing. You're growing, and as you're growing, you're thinking, I don't know nothing. That's when you're growing. When you realize, I, I thought I knew something. I guess I don't know. How many are there like you thought you knew, and you've come first cir full circle, and you're like, I don't know. That's a great place to be. Because you know what that means? You're teachable. And you know what that also means? You're leadable. You don't, you don't get to success. You're led to success. So that's why we have the word of God to lead us. God puts leaders in our lives to lead us. He gives us his word to lead us. Isn't that great? Is there anybody leadable? And if you're leadable, God can lead you to your destiny. God can lead you to your victory. God can lead you to health. God can lead you to restoration. God can lead you to purpose. God can lead you to your ministry. I got some good news for you. That God doesn't just want you to survive. He wants you to thrive. And he just doesn't want you to make it. He wants you to help others make it. How many believe that God is preparing you to help others get through it. Whatever trials, whatever trials you're going through is preparing you to help somebody else. And you're gonna be able to say, I've been there. No one likes the tests, but everybody loves the promotions and the graduations and the victories. Whatever tests you're going through, I got some good news for, for you. You're not gonna stay in it. You're gonna graduate from it. Might as well just learn. Come on, I'm ready to learn. So, um, Lisa's going to just say something real quick, and, but, um, but tomorrow, um, son, tomorrow night, just so you know, get here early to get a seat. We've been bombarded with calls all, all day long. Um, it, this place is going to be jam-packed full. It's going to be a place of breakthroughs, miracles, and deliverance tomorrow night. So show up, get ready for a miracle of God. Show up early, get yourself a seat today, tomorrow. But I think today is a bridge for everything. And I really believe that tomorrow, you know, we're going to be there. But tonight, I think, is really important. And we're bridging into great ministry. We've been preparing for six months to take God's presence everywhere. And these next six months, we're going to take God's presence to the streets. We're going to take God's presence to neighborhoods. We're going to take God's presence into our homes. So get ready to bring people into God's presence that we talked about last night. Bring people. It's their time. And it's our time. So get ready for that Sunday. I'm launching a book. I need your help. Um, let's download that book. And let's make Amazon know there's a book. And if we all do it together, say, wait a second. We're, we're, who's buy, we're, everybody's buying this book. And that's what we want. We want, we want to startle them all at once. We're going to work as a team and buy it all at once. How many believe we could do that together? That's Sunday. And now one more thing. On Sunday... As you're led, I, I, I was, I've been in my devotional time in the book of Exodus. And, and God gave Moses instructions to build. And he told him to build what, what was called a tabernacle, which was a house for the presence of God to dwell. 
and God gave him exact instructions. But this was a problem. Moses didn't know how to build. He was just a shepherd. And the other problem he had, he had no resources to build. But he had the vision to build. That's where I come in. I just got the vision to build. I don't know how to build everything. But all of us together, we could build it. How many believe all of us together, we build it? That's why God gets all the glory because his church builds. Right? Uh, right now we're expanding, you know, into Arizona. We're expanding, right? We're going to be expanding. We're expanding already into Compton. We're going to get ready to launch those churches out. But again, we're going to need some help and some support. I mean, they're going to need chairs. I mean, you know, 500, at least 500 chairs in Compton. They're going to need a sound system in Compton. They're, they're, uh, in, in, in Arizona, they have blacktop in a parking lot. It's all, it's just destroyed. They had a hailstorm that hit the building. has holes all in the building. We have to fix all that stuff up. All that in the expansion. Every time there's an expansion, we need support. So this Sunday, I'm going to ask you to do is just bring a special offering as you're willing. That's what I found out in Scripture, that they were willing to give towards it. And they had more than enough. If God puts on your heart to bring a special offering for our expansion of those two campuses, and I'm going to tell you this, God will never forget it. He'll never forget that I want to expand a church and I want to expand a church in Arizona and you help me expand that church. I'll never, ever forget that. It's a memorial in heaven every time we're expanding this kingdom. So Sunday, I just want to bring our offerings, our tithes and offerings, but let's bring something above and beyond to celebrate our anniversary and help us to expand into those areas so we're expanding with some resources. Can we do that together as a church on Sunday? So let's pray about that. Lisa, say hi real quick. Hello, everyone. So good to have you here on our 18th anniversary. Thank you, Lord. Still going strong. And I am so happy that I get to do life, not only with my immediate family, but you are my family as well. And thank you for being here tonight. I love all of you. Tonight, we have Glenn Berto. He, he, I'm telling you, I was just talking to him in the back, and he's like one of these generals, father, a, a father in the ministry. And I believe that he's been as a father in our ministry to speak to us as his children. He has 30 years of, of experience as a church pastor. Uh, in this last season of his life, he literally died and was left for dead, even in a hospital. And he's back. Now, I want you to get this. God brought him back from the dead I'm going to have him come back and share that whole testimony. He's, going to do it. He's not going to do it tonight. But I'm going to have him come back and share that testimony. Because as a result of him resurrect, God resurrecting him from the dead, there's been a big influx, a flow of, his, of the spirit of God through him in healing. And, and, and so I'm going to have him come back. I'm going to have him come back. They're in a church that flows and everything we flow. You know, but they just have more experience, 30 years of experience. They flow in deliverance. They have a manual on deliverance. They're seeing people get delivered and set free in their church as well. Isn't it great? Come on, they're reaching the inner cities as well. They're doing that. So I believe that this is a perfect time for him to speak to us. I'm so proud of you that you're here tonight. Get ready to just take some notes and let's adjust our thinking and adjust our lives forever. Let's give a wayward outreach. Welcome to Glenn Berto. Let's let them know we love them. All the way from Northern California, here to the Way Royal Outreach. Let them know you love them and you're ready to receive. Wow, wow. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Let's give a big hand. How about your pastors? 18 years. Wow. Wow. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, am, I am blessed to be in this church. I, I haven't been here before. And uh, let me just say, worship team, incredible, great job, sound people, lighting people. Hey, church, I, I've been all around the world. This is a world-class church. I've been all around. I, I, if I lived in this area, this is where I would go. They would be my pastors. 
I'm serious. I'm not playing. I don't, I don't say this everywhere. There's some places like, I will never come back again. No. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm telling you that, Pastor, I, I, I'm so impressed. Uh, you know how you, and you can do the same thing. You can walk into a place and you can sense everything what the pastor preaches, what he's accomplished, what he's done within a city, and I, I already know. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't been here, but I already know of the impact that he has had, not only in your lives, both of them have had in your lives, but also in the city, and not only the city, but in other cities around the country. And you are, listen, you are very blessed to have them as your pastors. You really are. I'm serious. Thank you for having me. I, I am very honored to be here. Really, I'm honored to be alive. You'll hear about that one day. I died eight times and was totally brain dead. And for me to even talk to you is a miracle. I may start crying just, just because the Lord allowed me to help people still. Uh, I lost that. My, my family in one night and my kids, dad's gone. And uh, we'll tell that story, but it's, it's a, it is a Lazarus story. If you're wondering, is God doing miracles? If you look at me and once you hear the story, it's been on the 700 Club and so forth, things like that around the country, uh, that it's just a, it's a resurrection is what I had. And so any, any time for me just standing here and being able to talk to you is a blessing to me to be able to continue doing this. So thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for having me. Now, this is going to be a different type of service, and the reason it's different because it's 18 years of your pastors that have been serving this community and have been serving you and preaching you and loving you and caring about you. And so I have, I finished writing my message this afternoon. So I have paper I wrote on. See, here's my paper. Uh, so it's not like I have a can message that's been memorized and I preached it a thousand times. Is that okay that I have a new message that I wrote specially for them? You need a little paper to start a fire, don't you? Amen, yeah. I'm going to ask you in this message to do something because it's not so much about you tonight. It's about them tonight. Uh, I came here to honor your pastors is what I want to do. Uh, 18 years is absolutely unbelievable and incredible. It really is. You're going to be doing this all night. But I'm going to ask you at times during the message to stand up, and I'm going to tell you to say something, and you're going to point to this couple when you say it, okay? Because we're all going to be together in this. How many are excited about we're going to honor our pastors here? So, so you need to get ready. And I said, Lord, I said, 18 years, what do you do? Uh, and, and what do you share with someone that has, is still, still growing, still doing things, still expanding, still affecting so many thousands of lives here? And just to see you on a Thursday night here is so impressive. You will not see this in churches around the world. This many people show up on a midweek or something like that. And it says something about your pastors. I, I mean, I'm already in love with them. I'm, I'm already in love with your church. Uh, I'm going to move here. I'm going to, I'm going to come to your church. I'm serious. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just saying this. I'm just saying this is a, the worship, the sound, the, the you, your excitement, the different uh, ethnic groups. It's just like my church. It's just like my church. We have all different backgrounds. We have all backgrounds. I have Filipino. I have, I have, I have the Hispanic. I have blacks. I have whites. Thank God I'm not an all, we don't have an all-white church because we wouldn't have any rhythm. But thank, you know, I'm glad y'all are here. Nobody could clap right if we're all white. Thank you for being part of the church. <laughs> so I, I've already fallen in love with you, but I'm, I'm going to share something with you. I said, Lord, show me, give me something special for these special people. Um, and I feel like the Lord has done that tonight, and I'm going to share this with you. So let's, let's pray, and we'll open up. Lord, help in Jesus' name. Amen. That, 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 covered about, that covered about everything I could have said. I, I want to share. This is where the Lord brought me for tonight to share with you. I'm in 1 Kings 19, 1 Kings 19. 
And uh, we'll put that up there. Let's see, where do I look behind me? Okay. And this is a story of Elijah and Elijah. Okay, I know it's similar names, but Elijah is the older. Elijah is the younger. So Elijah went from there and found Elijah, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He himself was driving the 12th pair. That's a whole other message right there. Some of you think you're not first or second or third. How about your 12th? And God chooses you and knows who you are no matter what position you think you are in right now. He can find you. You said, is he noticed me at all? Yeah, he notices you. He sees you. Here's the 12th man in the thing. Elijah went up to him through his cloak, which is a mantle, through the mantle, his anointing, threw it on him, okay? Elijah then left his auction immediately. He ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye. And he said, and then I'll come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. He said, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done to you? So Elijah left him and he went back. He took his yoke and oxen and he slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment. He cooked the meat, gave it to the people. What he did, he basically, he destroyed everything to return back to his old life. When you get saved, you might as well get rid of everything you had in your past. Might as well throw it away, bury it. God has something new for you. You need to go anywhere but backwards. Anywhere but backwards. And so he got rid of it all so he couldn't go back to his job. And they ate. And then he set out to follow Elijah. And what did he become? Yeah, he became a servant, which is one of the greatest, greatest titles you could have as a servant. We see here, this is the prophet Elijah who could call, call fire down from heaven. This is the man here. He could speak prophetically and the rain would stop, then speak again and the rain would fall. He's the man that killed hundreds of the prophets of Baal. He was feared by kings. And now he's on an assignment of God to choose the person to transfer his anointing. See, anointings don't die when a person dies. A mantle is not to fall on the ground, it's to fall on a person. We need to understand the generational transfers of the anointing. The generational anointing is not from old to new, it's from previous to next. So Elijah, who fears no one except God, walks up to this hardworking, successful farmer who has money in the bank, making money from his crops. And all of a sudden, Elijah walks by and he throws his mantle, his coat on him, and he throws it onto this young farmer. Elijah, who is working hard and preparing the soil, and here he is out of nowhere, this cloak covers him. And it hits him like a lightning bolt. I don't know, when I got saved, it hit me like a lightning bolt. I know I was totally changed from that day to this day. I, it's been over, it's been 49 years. I have not said a curse word. I've not drank. I've not done going back. God saved me and he saved me once and it was good enough to keep me, amen. I didn't have to go back because I had something that was so good. All of a sudden here, Elijah walks by, takes his cloak, he throws it on a young farmer and Elijah is working hard preparing the soil and out of nowhere, here this cloak hits him and it does something to him. It's an experience that he's never had in his entire life This was taking place. And immediately when that hits him, everything changes in his life. All of a sudden, he's not interested in plowing a field. He's not interested in being a farmer. He's not interested in building a house. He's not interested in the future. He no longer is interested in making a good living. He's not interested in a healthy retirement. He's not interested in his reputation in the community. He's not interested in anything else, his peers, what they think, or his friends. Instead, he turns immediately to the old prophet and he says, hey, wait right here. I got to go kiss my mom and dad. I've got to get a little money out of the bank. Let me say goodbye to my friends. And Elijah laughs and he said, what have I done to you? What's happened to you? And Elijah says, I have something. And I see this thing that's on you. 
that I can't live without. And to say it bluntly, I want what you have. I want you to stand to your feet, congregation. I want you to point over to your pastors over here and I want you to say, I want what you have. have. Say it again, I want what you have. You can be seated. I'm going to have you do that a couple times tonight. Now, this cloak or coat was not what others wore in Elijah's day. It was a, it was a prophetic coat. It was a, you were a prophet when you wore this coat. It identified you as a prophet in those days. Like medals on a, on a general that walks in, you, you, know, you know that what he's doing, you knew exactly what that uniform meant. This cloak didn't belong to anybody else except those that had a call of God on their life. It belonged only to the prophet. And there are several characteristics of this mantle of this cloak. Number one, it was a sign of the call of God in your life. See, when you have the call of God, I want to explain to you from the pastor's side, this message is really from the pastor's side. See, we don't have to spend time together and to know what each other goes through as a senior pastor. Because we go through the same thing. We fight the same devil. We fight in the same one. We go through the same thing. So I want you to understand from this position up here what your pastors deal with, what they have to go through just for you. And I want to do that tonight in honoring them. Because see, when you have a call in your life, you have no other options. God help you if you turn that down and you back away from that vow. See, the gifts of God is serious. There is no alternative profession for us. This is what God has called us to do. We're not looking for something else to do. This is it. We cannot go any other place and do any other thing or have another option. When God claims you, you're going to preach the gospel for the rest of your life. God expects you to finish the course. There are no other options. And if the devil ever says to you, there is no hope, if he says to you, there are no miracles, if he says to you, there are no dreams, I want you to tell him four words, Marco and Lisa Garcia, is what you tell the devil. (laughs) Nothing's going to stop them from their dream and what God's placed in their heart. Nothing is going to delay them at all. They have sacrificed for a dream. As a pastor, you sacrifice your family, you sacrifice your health, you sacrifice everything you have to be able to help people and being called to touch people's lives. See, you know, the greatness is not in pastoring so much, but it's in parenting. And you can see that by their children, because I saw your kids up here, and they were like my kids. All my kids are in the ministry. Here I am, I'm a first-generation Christian. I was raised uh, as a Catholic, as anybody Catholic raised as a Catholic as a kid? Yeah. Raised as a Catholic. In, in Louisiana, I'm from now, you, my accent, you say, where is he from? I'm from down south, yeah. I'm a Cajun from the swamps. When you see swamp people, those are my cousins down there. Yeah. That's, that's where I grew up. And it was all Catholic down there. We used to have a bump, they, no, serious now, I'm not playing. They have a bumper sticker on cars that say, if you can't find Jesus, look for his mother. I could tell there wasn't a lot of Catholics here to understand that. (laughs) And so, you know what? I listened when I was coming. I listened to your pastors preach. I listened to your pastor and I listened to to both of them and Lisa. And I I was just like amazed. I said, you know what? I, I understand his spirit, the power that both of them have. And when he stood up, I, I listened to his messages. So I said, I'm coming. I want to hear him preach. And I'm like, wow, he's, he's incredible. Then I heard his wife, and I said, she might be better. You know? <laughs> but no, she's not better. Each of them have their own anointing. They each have their own anointing. And I saw a mantle and cloak on both of their lives. And the call of God was on them. And it's obvious because of their widespread influence that they have. It's obvious because you see how it's expanding to other churches. But see, there were no options. This is what you're called to do. There's no back doors. They're wearing the mantle of God and wearing it in a wonderful, incredible, powerful way is what they're doing. So I want you to stand to your feet once again. I want you to point over to your pastors and say, I want what you have. have. Say it again. You You may be seated. 
there's a call on these two lives that have brought the presence of God to your families and to this city. Some would say, you know what, uh, God would have done it anyway. No, you don't know the Bible. In 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, every chapter you read is about headship. You will read about the glory of God to a kingdom because of a king, because of the righteousness of the king that had one vision with one people, with one leader. See, there's someone that has the mantle of God on their lives, says Pastor Marco. There's another one that has a mantle on her life, Pastor Lisa. And while many people watching TV and saying, you know what, I would love to have some of the great preachers I hear today. Oh, if, if T.D. Jakes was my pastor, or, or John Bevere was our pastor, or, or Jensen Franklin was our pastor, that would be so good. But see, there's no need for that because there's a mantle of God that's already in this house that's exclusively belongs to you. And you have it right here, and it's yours. Stand to your feet, point to them, and say, I want what you have. You may be seated. So number one, the mantle was a sign of the call of God. Number two, the mantle was a sign of special, powerful gifting. Pastor Marco and Lisa are gifted before they ever came here. They, they have a dream. They're gifted with a dream. You're leaders, pastor in churches, pastor in leaders, seeing leaders from around different places and helping them build their churches. Pastors and wives will come from all around the community and all around the nation to come sit for a few minutes to talk to your pastors. You maybe don't know that. You don't know the people that call and ask for advice of how to build their church to look like this. And I'm telling you, there are churches that don't look like this all over the world. This is a world-class church you have right here. It really is. I'm telling you. And you know what the greatest part of it is? The greatest part of it is, is that they're yours. They're not anybody else's. They're your pastors. And you have them right here. So stand to your feet and point to them and say, I want what you have. You may be seated. So the cloak was about the call. The cloak was also, the mantle was a special powerful and special powerful gifts. But number three is the cloak was about a life of suffering and also separation. And this is something that only really senior pastors can understand. And so there's kind of a fraternity that we have that we understand what we all go through. I understand, I don't have to know anything about other than I know what he goes through because I go through the same thing. Don't ever in your mind look at them and say, they've always had it so good. Don't ever think that. Because it's, it, you go through a time of suffering and separation. Don't look at them and think that they've never suffered in their lives. Don't ever look at that. Not many in the world understand a senior pastor and what they go through, the pressures of the job. You know, do you realize there, there are 1,700 pastors that leave the ministry every month? Every month. They're burnt out. They're worn out. They're tired of dealing with the sheep. <laughs> They're tired of dealing with, with the problems and things like this. Because, see, you've got to understand, as a senior pastor, and what this couple does, and maybe you don't know, they have to get up maybe at 2 or 3 in the morning because they've got a call to go down to the hospital because somebody is dying, and they have to be there at a bedside to pray with the family as someone dies. Or you get a call in the middle of the night, a 15-year-old is in a car wreck that was sitting in a car, but he's brain dead, and you've got to go up and help mama pull the plug to let their boy die because he's not coming back and you have to be there for that. They become counselors to people where you hear so many stories, it should be a Hollywood movie, some of these stories, of how crazy it is. You see marriages that are dissolved, that you prayed for and that you did. You deal with human trafficking. You deal with people, I've had people come in and talk about, can you find my child? I don't know who took my child. And, I, and you, you do everything you can to help out with that. You got 
you got people that cut themselves. You're dealing with people that are on drugs. You're dealing with people that can't pay their mortgage. You're dealing with people that, that can't pay their bills. They don't have a place to live. They have no Christmas presents. They have no place to go. Doctors have no cure. And the pressure falls totally on your pastors. The financial responsibility that he just talked about of the churches, we need some chairs. Somebody here, buy the chairs so we don't have to mention it again. Just, just buy the chairs. Just buy them. Get them. Get them out of the way. I don't want to hear about the chairs again. Okay. <laughs> but the financial responsibility. Uh, doing the lights here. I think my light bill in my church is 40000 a month. The lights. Just to light up everything, electricity. Uh, the money that you need to be able to fill. When, when you give, you don't understand how that takes the pressure off of us. When you're obedient... And when you hear what the vision is and you give to that vision, God says, I'm going to take care of you because you're planning into my vision. <laughs> Amen. The call of God is on their lives. I can see the call of God on their lives. It is there. And on one given day, one given day, all these things that I've talked about fall upon your pastors. One given day, the phone calls, the hospital visits, the financial pressures, the things you want to, you, you have dreams, but you don't have the finances to fulfill those dreams. And we depend on you to help us with that. I hear from God, but help me fulfill what God has. And if you take care of God's house, he'll take care of your house. Amen. You know that. And because of that, then you have the payroll. Then you have all the evangelism in the city. Then you're taking care of the needy like we do also. But the call of God is worth it. The call of God is worth it. On one given day, what happens, they deal with all of these things. Emotionally, they got to go through the finances, and then they get up and preach. They preach about happy marriages, preach about having wonderful children, preach to you about being successful, preach to you out of your situations. And they stand up here, and you say, well, do they have any problems at all? Oh, they have them, but they've strapped their helmet and shoulder pads on and said, let's, go, let's conquer somebody, and let's go ahead and do something great. They don't let that bother them. They don't get here and talk about their problems. They don't complain about it. They don't gossip about it. They don't give up. No, they just wake up and they say, look, we're going to dream again and we're going to keep conquering and win this city for Christ and we're going to go ahead and populate heaven and depopulate hell is what we're going to do. And the reason they do that because there's a call on their lives. The call of God is on their lives. The call of God is on their lives. I want what you have. I do. The last sign of the cloak and the mantle is a sign of God's covenant. A covenant in, in the Bible is an agreement. It's a contract that God has with you and I. Our Bible is a contract. It's an agreement. That Bible is God saying, I'm going to do exactly what I said I'm going to do. That's why you need to read your Bible. That's why you need to know what the Bible says and not just look at pastors teaching you and that's the only way you hear. You understand? You're going to have to pick the Bible up, pick up the fork, and you're going to have to eat yourself and learn the scriptures because times are going to happen where you can't call them. They're not going to answer the phone. And don't you get upset when they don't answer the phone because that means that God wants you to deal with, go straight to him and not them. We don't follow the man of God. We follow the God of the man. Okay. So we see in this story here in one deliberate act, Elijah. He throws his cloak on Elijah. It was a now touch for a future promise. And at that moment, Elijah lost all interest in everything else. Look what it says in 2 Kings 2 we'll look at. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elijah, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away. And look what Elijah says. He says, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. I want more of what you got. I want more. I want what you have. See, in this, in this church here, you got to understand that not only are you here to hear the man and the woman of God, but you're here also to get a double portion of that. And you need to be asking whatever is on pastor, don't ever think that you can't have the same thing. It's the same God that we, that we have 
on us that you have on you. The same one that does miracles that we pray, same ones with you. And so you've got to understand that Elijah then turns his mantle, this story is so great, he turns his mantle over to Elijah. He said, let me tell you about it. The scripture talks about heaven's headlines or Elijah is coming home. It's a homecoming. Subtitle, I think he's going to choose Elijah. And so we see Elijah says to Elijah, you've served me. What can I do for you? And Elijah said, I want twice the anointing. He said, I want what you have. And that's what we're talking about tonight. And then Elijah said, but it's a hard thing. I don't know if we have that scripture. Does it say that? Yeah, it's a difficult thing. It's hard what you're asking. See, if you see me when I'm taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. So how close do you need to be with that anointed person? How close to serve that person? You want to have an anointing? You want to break yokes? You want to see things happen in your life? Get close to those that are anointed that God has given you in this church. Because if you get close to them, don't just say, I want what they have. Say, I want a double. Give me double, God. Give me more of what they have. And so we see in Scripture here that, that here it is. The mantle begins to fall, and Elijah said, it's going to be yours if when I leave, you see me when I leave. You have to be close. So those of you that church is just optional to you, you're going to miss out. Those of you that just want to sit, soak, and sour, you're going to miss out. If you just want to sit in church, sitting Christians hatch hypocrites. You don't want to do that. you got to serve. The Bible talks about being a servant. You want to be strong in the areas and the fields that God has called you, then you serve the anointing is what you do. You get in there and help them. And see, we see Elijah is standing there trembling as chariots of fire, the Bible says, begin to show up in heaven. And then Elijah is taken up to heaven alive. He didn't die. He went straight up to heaven alive. And Elijah is totally stunned at this moment here. And he looks at his feet and Elijah's mantle is sitting at his feet. The Lord God of Elijah is now the Lord God of Elijah. Now, how many here will say, I want to be in line for that kind of anointing? Wave your hand. So let me close this, give you three quick things here, three quick things. Um, You have to see the anointing is what it's saying. You've got to see it. In Jesus' hometown, they did not see the anointing. You can be so close to the anointing, you take it for granted. You may have been in this church for years and years and you start taking them for granted. Don't you dare do that because you're not going to be able to receive what they have to offer. You saw that in Jesus' hometown, that Jesus, the miracle-working man, had the least amount of miracles in his hometown because they looked at him and said, well, I didn't, wasn't he the guy that fixed my, uh, fixed my roof? You know, he's the, wasn't he the guy that came over and did that, fixed our washer and dryer? Yeah, he, you know, he was a carpenter, wasn't he? And they didn't see who he really was. Don't ever diminish who God has sent you and realize that God has an anointing that he's placed here. You really don't know your pastors like you should. These are people here that you've got to realize that there is an anointing that you can have the more you honor that and you serve that. Here's number two here. Here's number two. We want to talk about this. And you know know what? You know what? The thing that's exciting about this tonight with me is that that anointing doesn't belong to anybody else. It belongs to you. They belong to you. God has sent you some of the greatest pastors that you could have in the world to love you, to preach to you. Come on, how many believe that? Why don't you stand to your feet? Won't you point to your past and say, I want what you have. You You may be seated. See, the anointing and the mantle doesn't belong to the nations. It belongs to you, being a blessed church. And I want you to understand that. I want you to see that how blessed you really are. And um, the second thing I want to tell you about it is that the Bible speaks about serving the anointing. You saw that, that he came and served. You've got to serve is what you do. You get involved and you served. I've been in my church in Modesto for 29 years. I've been in the ministry over 45 years. I've traveled all around the world. I've been 
places all over, all over the place. And, and the people that serve and the people that serve the anointing are the ones that are the most blessed that I found in my church. They really are. They're the ones that, that are blessed. And they're the ones that it doesn't matter what the devil says, that you're just not going to be denied. I preached the message not long ago that it was entitled, Devil, Your Request Has Been Denied. Whatever you want to say, you tried to kill me, but you couldn't kill me. You messed up by letting me live because I get to come here and talk to you. You messed up by letting me have some breath because now you're going to pay for what you did. There's a payback. How many of you have a payback time? You're ready to pay the devil back for what he's done to you. It's time that we rise up and pay him back. You hear that, devil? Yeah. Mm. We've had so many revivals like you have too. We've had so many things, and, and I, I just thank God that I'm able to see more of what God wants to do. And, uh, but you'd also, the last thing I want to say is that what you do scripturally is to sow into the anointing. You have to sow into the anointing. You not only serve it, you don't only see it, but you've got to serve it. Your pastor and his wife are not going to stop dreaming. If you wonder, is enough going to be enough? No. No, they're not. It's like, how many things are you going to keep thinking of? Well, what you, you don't have a pastor, you have an apostle is what you have. Now, let me explain to you the apostle. The apostle, the apostle is, the, is the one that can touch every gift there is. Here's the, the apostle is touching every gift. The apostle touches gifts. And the apostle is one that thinks outside the church. That's why you have in multi-site churches. That's why your pastor's in demand to go places and people want to hear him speak. Most pastors never go speak anywhere. They never do anything. It's just the, they have 50, 70 people in a church. I think the average church is maybe 80 people in the country. So this is, this, is like, this is like one of the largest churches in the country right here. You don't maybe realize that, but most churches are, are small. But their pastors, the pastor is a shepherd. A pastor just takes care of the people that are inside the walls of the church. That's not what you have, which is, which is why you're blessed. You have an apostolic pastor and his wife. They don't only look at you and want to take care of you, but they're looking at the hurting people outside the building and said, I got to help them. I'm going to have to feed somebody. I'm going to have to help somebody. I'm going to have to fix their car. I'm going to have to help them and think, I got to give them some food. I've got to do some things. I'm not going to sit in the church. I got to get outside the church. Because, folks, we're not the lights of the church. We're the lights of the world. Who cares if we sit in here and sing all our worship songs if we don't get outside and sing? Who cares if we shout and clap in here and then we stay quiet when we get in the world? We got to take this out there. We got a world that's so messed up, and you know that, and I know that. There's no soundness in it. There's no, I want to get a shirt that says, make logic great again. You know, I mean, we, we have no common sense at all. You and I are smarter than the people in Washington. You know, I don't know. But I'm saying, you and I have a message that is primed for revival because we have evil showing up, but evil cannot win, God says. You're going to win. The church is going to win. And this church is going to be a light to this community in this world. Come on, church. Point to your pastor, stand to your feet. Say, I want what you have. have. Say it again. Remain standing. Remain standing. Amen. You know, in John, it talks about passion for God's house to consume you. You hear what I just said? Passion for God's house to consume you. It's already consumed them. But having a passion for God's house to consume you. Well, I felt I did everything I should do. I honor you, Pastor, for what they don't know you went through, both of you went through in your family. You're blessed to, uh, when you think of them, uh, they're the mom and dad, basically, they're mom and dad of the church. 
And like I said, look at the children. Look at the children and see what kind of parents they were. All my kids are in ministry. All my kids, I, I'm, look, I'm looking at your kids up here and I'm looking at my kids. <laughs> That's what they do too. They preach. My daughter that lives in L.A., she sings, sings all over the place. It preaches like crazy. She's wonderful. And I had two daughters and a, and a son all in ministry. And uh, I'm blessed and we're blessed to see that. But to see another family and to know what you go through in ministry but to put your family first, they did that. And uh, Pastor, I want to honor you. I want what you have too. We all want what you have, amen. I want you to come up to the stage. Will you welcome your pastors right now? Come on, church. Where's the family? I want the family to come up. Family? Family, would you come up with them? Come on, church. Here they are. Okay. Well, look at this. Look what you have here. Are we missing somebody? I'm Marisa. Get up here. <laughs> Get up here. She's eating candy right now. She's eating candy. Time for this. Uh, uh, this has been, this has been, to meet you, it's just been an honor uh, to be with you. And uh, the energy, the life is just, it's, it, it's very, so, so much similar to our church. And Pastor, uh, I'll keep saying it. Um, Y'all have done an incredible job. Keep expanding like you're doing. Keep dreaming. Don't ever stop. And you got to understand that the devil fights you at every stage. When they, you know, somebody asked me, he said, uh, uh, is there a devil behind every bush? I said, no. I said, there's several behind every bush, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. And then I had pastor, had somebody ask me, he says, what will it take to be in the ministry? And I said, everything. But I said, at that price, it's an incredible bargain. It's an incredible bargain. It's a special life you have, and the kids know that. I mean, you don't get home on time at 5 o'clock. You don't eat at the right time. And it's, it's a special calling that you have where your whole life is different than everybody else's. Your kids grow up, it is different than everybody else's. And, of course, the kids will all tell you if I gave them a mic, they said everybody's looking at them, seeing how they're acting. And wondering, you know, what's going on with them, what's the kids and so forth, things like that. You know what you need to do more than anything else? These are the people here that the devil wants to destroy more than anybody else in this church. Don't you ever listen to anybody speak negative about any of these people up here. Never, never, never. Serious. We need people. I need people to hold my arms up. I don't need people to tie my arms. I need people that's going to dream with me. I've got people to hold my arms up. Don't listen to negative talk. God didn't give you an ear for garbage. It's not a garbage can. It's to hear his word. And so, Pastor, one more time, I want you to point to them and say, I want what you have. Would you extend your hands toward them? And I want to pray a prayer. And why don't you all start, all of you that love them, start praying right now for them. Come on, let's pray in this church. If you want to pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Start praying right now and pray a blessing. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. I thank you for the anointing and the mantle on this man and the cloak on him to touch cities, cities, cities in Jesus' name. Thank you for the anointing that is on their lives. And God, I pray that it will touch so many people, so many people hurting today, so many people lost today, so many people need Jesus today. This family is a super family, super powerful family, a family that Father is going to make inroads, is going to make, make hell pay for what it's done to so many of us here. Thank you for strong leaders. Thank you for leaders that didn't quit when they thought about it. Thank you for leaders that couldn't quit because they had a call of God on their lives. Thank you that, Lord, they stayed here 18 years and going to still be with us to continue. 
thank you that, Lord, I'm going to get what they have. But I want double on my life what they have. So, God, I thank you for them. I thank you for 18 years. And, Lord, I pray for 18 more years in this city and around the world. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you, Pastor. Let's give Pastor Glenn a way we're all just thank you. Uh, just obviously, I didn't tell him to come here and preach that. Um, but God knows what we need. And God knows what me and Lisa and the family need. Here, here you go. And, and so many times we're, we're ministering and ministering and ministering and ministering. Just so you know, even if you're here for the first time, we've never had a service like this in 18 years. We have not, not had like a pastor appreciation service, nothing like that. We just never have done that. Um, so you know that God is just saying this to get us all appreciative of each other and we're family and help us to understand each other better because it's relationship. And, and we as, as pastors really have nowhere to go. I mean, so many times we, we I mean, who am I going to go to for counseling in the church? So there's a lot of battles that we fight with just us praying, me and Lisa, and just fighting through. And we get hit sometimes with overwhelming like stuff like, oh, man, God's given us a big vision. We don't know how to do it. And then we got to see God and get through all the confusion and get through all of that and get some clarity from God. Understand, for you. It's all for us. For, it's for the church. We, and I, I, I love what Glenn said. Like, there is no option for me. I'm not going back into the business world because I'm called, and I told you guys this, I'm not going nowhere. I will die in San Bernardino. I will die right here in this. It's, that's how it's going to happen. We're going to be traveling all over the world, but I'll, I'll have a San Bernardino address when it's all said and done. What I mean by that is I'm not looking for an opportunity. I'm not an opportunist. I'm not, we're, not, we're not looking for the best offer that we cannot be bought. We are sold out to God, and I want you to get this, and we're sold out to you. That's it. There's no other agenda. That's it. it. You know, as we're sharing and giving the word, it's really, I think about how can we bless the people so they could grow and be everything that God called them to be. So I just want to thank you guys. Tonight is a special night, you know, for us as a family. And thank you guys for being here. And, and that's what I do want to do. When I leave this earth, I just want to pour it all out. And I want you to have it all. And then take it farther than we ever imagined. How many believe what God is calling us to do cannot be done in one lifetime? It's going to take all of us. And we're going to continue dreaming and we're going to continue expanding and we're going to continue praying for each other. This is a time where I know as a pastor I need to spend more time in prayer. Um, because we're going into greater, I want you to get this, greater warfare. We're all going into it. Someone said we're all going into it. We're going into war to gain territory. But Compton is not going to come without a war. I understand. Arizona is not coming without a war. I was just talking to Pastor Robert in Arizona. And, and there's some, it, Arizona, Safford area, it's a Mormon, Mormon stronghold. Like there, I mean, it's every... All the properties are owned by Mormons. It's like a Mormon city. And two or three of them just gave their lives to the Lord in a short period of time. And Pastor Robert told me the elders of the church came to those two people and said, what are you doing? They put so much pressure on them. They, the, the people were crying and they came back and said, we can't get baptized. And Robert had to talk them back into it. And they go, okay, we're going to get baptized. All I'm saying, there's demons in Compton that have hold, held families in poverty, in pain, in suicide, in violence, in drugs. 
and God is bringing a church. We're the church. Yes, we're sending a group out there, but we're the church that's sending them out there. And we're going to go to warfare <coughs> for these families that they don't even care that we're there yet. But we love them. And we love you. We, just think about this. We started this church. We didn't know who was going to come. But we fought for you. And we started for you. Are you guys ready to get an anointing from God? Come on. God has greater leadership for you. Greater joy. Greater victories. Um, does anybody want to? I know you guys I have mics. I mean, are you guys ready to sing? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I, okay. Okay. Does anybody have anything to say here? Um, God speaking to you. You want to share something? I'm going to give you an opportunity. Aliana, you have anything? Little oh, prophet hey. Aliana. I just want to thank every single one of you guys. I mean, I honestly feel being a part of this family, I don't even know how I got here. Honestly, it's crazy God did that. <laughs> God gets glory for that. But I, we were talking about this not too long ago. Like, you guys always make us feel so loved. I, there's the, as as a, being a part of this church and with so many people, um, we know our church loves us, and we know our church has our back. And I just want to say thank you because that helps us um, to move confidently in the call that God has on our lives. So continue to pray. Uh, we appreciate thank every you. single one of you. Thank you. Um, I know this is our 18-year anniversary, and I'm 18 years old, so I literally have been here since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> So I went, like, I am a product of this church. Like, I went through Kids World, the youth, and now I'm here. And I'm just so thankful for every one of you guys who have watched me grow up, you know, and have served me and encouraged me because I'm telling you, I probably wouldn't even be saved if I wasn't in this family, you know, because I was crazy. I'm just going to say that. And so really, truly, thank you guys so much. I'm here because of you guys. Thank you. All right. Aliana, you got any prophetic word for us of what God is showing you? There we go. She's our, she's our prophet of the family. All right. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What, it got, what is God showing you? Go ahead. I mean, I had a word for Compton since I know we're branching out Compton as well. Um, but I did have a vision that God gave me. Um, I shared it with you guys, well, with Gabriel. And I seen just like a vision of the whole earth. And over the city of Compton, there was this cage over it. And God was showing me. And then there was also a hole and a lock. And the only way to unlock it was through this key. And I was asking God, like, what is this key to unlock this cage over this city? And he said, love. Love is what is going to unlock that city. So I really just wanted to share that as well. I know we're branching out Arizona and many other churches, but we couldn't do it without each and every single one of you guys. And you guys are family to me. I love each and every one of you guys. Even if I haven't met you, I love you guys as well. <laughs> and I'm really thankful for you, everyone here. All right, awesome. I, I, Brianna, she's not going to hide behind the baby. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Brianna. <laughs> no, um, I, I will just kind of reiterate what they said. Um, I'm so thankful for just each and every one of you guys. And even the team we have, like, that I have that is closest to me, like, they're so amazing, but they're also a reflection of every single one of you guys. And so, like, really, we just thank you so much for just supporting our family throughout the years. Because, like you said, like, we don't have a lot of, like, we don't have anybody to go to. Like, if we have problems, it's kind of awkward because we got to go to our parents. <laughs> you know, we don't really have, like, another person that we can go to. But it's awesome that our parents are able to give us, you know, that advice. But, like, they're also able to spend time with us because of you guys. Because you guys support this church and this ministry and the vision that God has given us. And so thank you guys so much for even allowing him to have time to spend with us and to raise us the right way, God's way. Thank you. Awesome. 
You know, and each one of these girls are so gifted in different ways. You know, we got our psalmist, which, you know, she's constantly created music and, and she's called to do that. But, you know, all these girls worship. There's no doubt about it. And, and Annalisa is, is now being introduced to worship. Isn't she doing a great job? Don't you feel like there's an anointing on her? Like, there's an anointing to break the yoke. I mean, every time she's like singing, like, wait, it's just breaking the yoke. And, and so she's stepping into what God's called call her to step into. And, and Amarisa's everybody's best friend. There's Amarisa. Just so you know, Amarisa knows more people than I do. And if you get to know her, you're going to take her somewhere. Like she'll talk to you and say, okay, where are we going to go? And, and then you go, where do you want to go? I want to go to Disneyland. And then you're going to say, okay, when do you want to go? How about next week? <laughs> what day? Thursday. Okay, I'll write it down on my calendar. She has a calendar. She's put it down, and she will follow up on you, and you, you will take her. And I go, who are you going with now? And then she comes home that people buy her stuff. Right. So she's like, everybody's like, her ministry is just be friends with everybody. Right. And I, I'll tell you this. She knows everybody's name. She has a gift to know. Look at her. She's just trying to act. She ain't paying attention, but she knows everybody's name. <laughs> she knows so. She really does. I, even like on TV, we're watching a movie. She goes, that's that actor. That's that actor. The other day, we're watching a movie. She goes, this is not a good movie. I don't know nobody on it. <laughs> Look at this is like a bootleg movie. I go, okay, turn it off then. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> that's her gift. And, you know, and I'm and, uh, Aliana is, is getting involved with junior high. She's part of being a junior high pastor with, with Jesse. You know, so, and Abriana, Abriana is, is right now stepping into Lisa's role, the mantle, and she's taking over our women's ministry for the Way World Outreach. You know, so she's doing a great job, and, 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 and she's an amazing teacher of the word. Like, she's a master teacher of the word, so... She's going to be speaking a lot more, you know, in our church, and so get ready for that, too. And a lot of you, one of the things that I've seen about our church is that we're, we have a deep, deep, um, I would say, roster. What I mean by that is there's a lot of people that could communicate very well here. You guys are amazing. Come on, we got a lot of people with the right hearts. We got a lot of workers. We got a lot of servants. Come on, we got to adopt a block. We roll deep. Let's give the Lord a hand that we got a, a team here that's doing the work humbly. Lisa, any, any last things? A few words. No, oh. is this on? Um, no, I just love and appreciate each one of you guys, really do. You guys are my family, and I know I say that, but I, it's, it's true. You are my family. <laughs> that's, that's you guys, you know. So I love you, all of you. And understand, when we say you're our family, like we don't have like a lot of like blood family out here. I mean, really, you're it. <laughs> That's the way it is, okay? Um, we're going to pray before we leave, and, and tomorrow night's going to be really amazing. Last night we were here till 10 o'clock, something like that, just helping people get delivered and set free and healed and casting demons out. And we're, we're, we get down on the floor with them, and that's what we do. You know, and I'm grateful. Tonight, we're going to dismiss in just a second. Let's give a hand for our children's ministry. That's, come on, the great, greatest children's ministry in the country. I mean, tomorrow night, they, I mean, they have a whole anniversary over there. But before we leave, I want to always give, I told the Lord that we would never leave the church without giving an opportunity to pray and talk to God. This is a place where you, for you to get connected to your breakthrough, to your healing, to your restoration into your destiny. This is how you come to Jesus. Say it with me, come to Jesus. This is how you come to Jesus. You come the way you are. You come with your addiction. You come with your depression. You come with your failures. You come with your hurt. You come with your inadequacies. You come with your shortcomings. You come with your low self-esteem. You come with your broken heart. You come with your story. And you come with the abuse. And this is what God does. He doesn't judge you. 
He's not bringing things to your attention to judge you, to put you down. He wants to heal you, forgive you, and restore you. If you're here for the first time, and, and I know this was a little different than regular service, but I want you to think about this, that God loves you. And if there's Christians that have judged you, accused you, and put you down, this is what I'll say for them. I apologize for them because they misrepresented a Jesus that came to die for you. He loves you. And the scripture actually says that he did not come to judge you, but he came to save you. And that word save means simple word, save. He came to save those that have been lost. The word lost means those that are destroyed by the decisions that they've made. Have you ever made some bad decisions and been self-destructive? Come on, everybody. Have you ever made decisions that you regret? Have you ever hurt yourself and hurt others that you love? Every one of us have done that. But Jesus came to restore and save those that have been lost. Those who are separated from peace, joy, and I'm saying you're separated from God. I'm not offering you religion. What I want you to do is experience fullness of life that Jesus offers. He knocks on your heart's door tonight. And how he knocks is through words. Through words that we heard tonight. And you could feel him tugging at your heart. Tonight is not a night to give up. Tonight is a night to surrender to Jesus. Not give up on life, but surrender to Jesus. What does God want? You. If you were with Jesus right now, look at me. He goes, what do you want from me? He goes, I just want to have a relationship with you. You were created to have a relationship with me. And I want to forgive you of everything you've ever done. And I want to set you free. And I want to fill you with my spirit. I want to fill you with my joy. I want to set you free. I want to give you a purpose. I want to give you eternal life. And tonight's your night. Now I'm going to ask you because I love you. He's Jesus knocking at your heart's door. If you're saying, yes, I want a new life. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want eternal life. Come the way you are. An invitation is being made. Don't put it off for tomorrow. This is your moment to be made whole. What are you searching for? Do you want to do one more round of the drugs? One more round of the lusts? One more round of the selfishness? One more round of the anger? One more round of doing it your way? God says, don't do it. Today's your day. Make this today the end of your rope. I'm done doing it my way. Jesus, save me. Make me whole. I want to follow you for the rest of my life. Today's your day. I'm going to count to three of you saying, Pastor, I want to recommit my life to the Lord because somebody needs to recommit their lives to the Lord and, and they also even commit to the church again. Number two, you say, man, I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm going to die right now to go to heaven, but I want to be forgiven. I want to be saved. I want the fullness of life that you're offering. When Jesus came, they, this is what he says, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I mean, there's a real devil that wants to destroy your life. He's called a thief. But God is saying, but Jesus said, but I've come to give life in abundance. And all I'm saying, until you have Jesus, you're not living the life. Come on, open up your life to Jesus. Just just say this, I'm done living my way. Jesus, take over my life. Forgive my sins, and he will. And he'll save you. He'll give you eternal life. And he'll be your father. You'll be his child. I'm going to count to three. If you're saying, I want to recommit my life to the Lord, or I want to give my life to Jesus. When I say three, raise your hands all over this building. One, this is your day to recommit your life to the Lord. Two, this is your day to give your life to Jesus. When I say three, raise your hands. Three, raise your hands. That's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender. I'm so proud of you. So come on, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Anybody else out there? There it goes. I want to recommit. This is my new day. I want those to raise their hands. I want you to leave your seat. And I want you to come up here real quick. Come up here real quick. This is a sign of you leaving your old life in those seats and starting a new life. Aren't you glad that you're part of a church that every time we come, someone's getting saved. Someone's giving their life to Jesus. Someone's making a decision to follow Jesus, experience the fullness of life. Come on, come back. 
Come back to God. Come on, they're coming. Let's give the Lord a hand as they're coming. Someone's coming to get set free. One more thing. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, the church. Come on, someone. Come on, someone's fighting. Someone's fighting demons to come up here. Someone's fighting condemnation to come up here. Someone's fighting an addiction to come up here. Someone's fighting depression to come up here. Awesome. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, someone's fighting to come up here. Let's encourage them. Let them know you're proud of them. Let them know that we, you want them in our family. Awesome. Awesome. All right. And one last thing. As we're going to pray, and then we're going to dismiss tomorrow night, Isaiah Salvador is going to be here. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss it. Tonight, God gave instructions to us. Has it changed your thinking tonight? This is what it's all about, building relationships. Tonight was us building a relationship at a deeper level. That's all that happened tonight. Isn't that important though? Thank you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your service. So tomorrow night is going to be breakthrough night. You do not want to miss it. When Isaiah Salivar speaks, it's like, it seems like the whole audience just stays standing up the whole time. It's going to be fire tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. Bring somebody who needs deliverance, freedom, and salvation tomorrow night. Okay, we're going to pray. But before you leave, if you need prayer for anything, you have a care you're struggling with, overwhelmed, just come up. As everybody's going that way, come up here. We'd love to pray with you. So that way you could give it to God and not leave here anxious and worried or just overwhelmed. Let's give it to God, okay? We want to we wanna pray with you. Will you let us pray with you? Let's go ahead and let's pray right now. And God sees your heart. And some of you guys are Christians that are recommitting yourself to a whole nother level. And then some of you right now, this is going to be your life transformation. You're going, to, you're going to say on June 23rd, on June 23rd, I surrendered everything to Jesus. I remember. It's going to be your spiritual birthday. Tomorrow is Lisa and I's 33rd year marriage anniversary. So 18 years church, 33 years of marriage. So what can I bring? What can I bring? Bring yourself. The greatest gift that you could bring me is you showing up to church tomorrow and receiving everything you ha God has for you. Let's pray. Someone's being touched by God. Someone's going to get set free right now. Come on, someone's crying because God is touching their heart. Come on, someone's experiencing God's love right now. Someone's getting set free from an addiction right now. Someone is getting their mind back. Come on, someone is getting their mind back. Someone, come on, is getting their healing. Someone's getting their family back. Someone's getting their children back. Come on, come on, some right now, that's happening right now as we're praying. Someone's receiving eternal life. Someone's receiving Jesus as their Savior. It's happening now. Let's pray. Repeat after me, everybody here in the front and even the audience, let's, let's support them. Say, Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I've done it my way. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm asking you, Lord, to save me. I believe that you were, that you were punished. You died. You suffered to pay the price for all the wrong I've done so that I could be forgiven. I can't earn salvation, but I could believe for it. I believe you're my Savior. Today, I repent of my sins and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a child of God and a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. Fill me now with your fire of your spirit set me free from every addiction from lust and father from every curse make me new right now in the name of Jesus I thank you I am saved I'm born again in Jesus name amen let's give the Lord a hand come on if you're here let's give the Lord a hand one more time 
Thank you for celebrating 18 years with us. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your evening with your family. I'll be praying for you for sure. Let's continue praying for one another. Love you. Remember God is for you. There's no one can come against you. Remember this. Your best days are ahead of you.